Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner, and to the astute observer, you may have already noticed my background has changed. Why? Because we moved again. Now, to answer the obvious question, Joe, why do you move so much? Because studio tour videos do really well on YouTube, so why not just move every couple years so you can do a new studio tour video? That makes sense, right? Right? Anyway, we're going to be here for a very long time, so I want to give you the official proper studio tour, so let's dive in. What is it? The tour starts with bare feet. This is the door to my living room. You can hear the zombies in there. And then these are stairs that will take you into... Dun, 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 dun the studio so if you may recall a couple of studios back two studios back to be exact i was over the garage of that house and similar looking room with the sloped ceilings and the kind of otherwise symmetrical shape so this will look a lot different and will play a lot different but here's the view oh yeah so let's take a look at what we got here. So what I really wanted to show you was actually how I landed on the plan for this studio setup. So I was here uh, a couple days before we moved in and thinking through how I wanted to set up my rack, which I ended up setting up almost exactly like it's always been. But the other big thing was how I wanted to place everything. So this was where it got really fun and kind of interesting. So I drew the room, turns out this room is almost a square. It doesn't seem like it because of the ceilings, but from that wall all the way over here, and nothing's in focus anymore, the is the same dimension as this cross dimension. The reason it doesn't feel like a square is because this stairwell comes out. That stair leads up to an attic, which is just weird, this little halvesy hobbit door. And then there's a wall here that kind of comes out. Show you that real quick. Little Joe Gilder rocking on the speakers. See? So that wall comes out to make it feel not quite square, but it's actually quite square. Which is, if you know anything about rooms and studio setup, that's not an ideal shape because a lot of frequencies tend to build up and make for a lot of problems. So when thinking through that, I was gonna say, let's look, let me just draw it out and let's take a look at how we can set this up in the best way. So the first thought was, well, I really should have the studio desk here firing down the length of the room. But then I realized that's, that's good advice for a rectangular room, but not for a square room, because then it really doesn't matter. So I decided to put the studio desk here facing this way. So the, the dotted line represents the slanted ceiling. So the ceiling slant down and the studio is firing that way. And the reason I did that is the same reason that the last studio that looked like this was if the sound is going this way, if it's just a regular room, it's going to hit those walls and bounce back. And it's going to hit the side walls and bounce back. However, the speakers, as you can see, are here, right? So they are above or right at the level of these angled ceilings here. So the sound's going to come out. It's going to go, it's going to hit that angled ceiling and it's going to go into the couch, into the floor, into that other stuff over there. Sound waves work a lot like any other waves, water, light. It's just going to follow the angles. So the sound's going to come over here and instead of bouncing back, for the most part, it's going to get knocked down into the carpet and spread out throughout the room. Same thing for the sound coming out of the back of the speakers. It's going to go hit those angled walls and go down and a lot of those low frequencies will get absorbed by these bass traps. I've had these for years. They're just two of them just leaning against the wall, making kind of a triangle shape. I'll show you, they're both back here. This is dead space that can't be used anyway, because if you come any further than this, you hit your head on the ceiling. So these act as big honking bass traps. So sound comes out of the back of the speakers and goes dunk, dunk, gets absorbed here, low frequencies, especially here, and then higher frequencies on the carpet. So I don't have a lot of sound bouncing off the sides and coming back. That leaves me with only the side walls to deal with, which is really typical, right? This is something we've always, I've talked about all the time. If the studio desk is here, let's put a, some sort of absorption 
to the left and the right so that sound bouncing off the sides doesn't come back to my ear but gets absorbed here so I'm really just hearing the speakers. And as you can see, I've done just that. I've got these two gobos. This one's on wheels. I've wheeled it over here so I can move it around later as I need it for recording. But the sound hits that, gets mostly absorbed, and doesn't come to my ears. Then over here, same thing, there's another one. This one, the wheels broke off. But it just sits there, absorbing frequencies. So when I'm sitting in this position, the sound that goes back goes to the floor, sound that goes to the side gets absorbed, sound that goes to the ceiling bounces and goes this way, sound that travels this way hits that wall, it goes down, gets absorbed by the couch and the carpet and everything else. Now the one place in the room that was super annoying when I was in here when it was empty was this area here. So we got a pretty big amount of wall here and a pretty big amount of wall here and there was a bunch of that flutter echo of sound going back and forth. And that's what happens when you have parallel walls and nothing on them. So this wall, man, does not want to focus. This wall, the sound was bouncing to this wall. So when I would stand in between those two, it sounded terrible. Like I'd set a delay with a really fast time and a really pretty high feedback sound. So it just goes tick 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 Not good. So I put one absorber there and then I put two absorbers here. <laughs> redneck stacked on top of each other so that there's no t this side of the wall is paired with that absorption and then this chunk of wall is paired with this absorption so there's no two parallel walls that are facing you could probably stand to put some absorption here but its partner so to speak is a big window and windows are actually really good for sound because a lot of the sound travels out or doesn't get quite doesn't bounce off like it does with a regular wall at least the lower and mid frequencies. I don't know if that's true, but it seems to be my experience. And that cabinet did not fit in the room. So now it seems like I've got all my bases covered. I can have my keyboard to the right to have easy access to it. My writing desk here, which is where we are now. <laughs> my phone was full. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, I'm over the garage in Tennessee in summertime. So it gets very warm up here. So having my own dedicated air conditioner unit, which is this, you know, little hotel looking deal works really well and it's super handy. But in just the time that I've been shooting this video, it's already gotten pretty warm. So that's the sacrifice of being up here. But it does mean the rest of the family and all the noise of kids being home for the summer is downstairs and through a fairly tight door. So I can't really hear them very well. And there's nobody above me dancing on the ceilings usually. And there's generally nobody below me because it's a garage. Um, so it ends up being a very cool and enjoyable space. Let me walk you around the room. That was the idea for setting it up from a sound standpoint. And one of the things too is I wanted it to look good on video, right? I do tons of videos with a camera here, right? Pointed at my beautiful mug here. So I wanted that look to be pretty cool. So I've got stuff over there and stuff over there. It just has a nice look to it. Versus if I put my desk here, A, I'm blocking the air conditioner, and B, that doesn't look as, as cute. I could put something on that door, I guess, but stairs just is kind of ugly. And then I thought about what if I put my desk here facing the window? So there's, there's a window over here. That look could be kind of cool. But then you, if you ever have a studio desk, you know back behind there can be kind of ugly. So we'd be walking up the steps into the back of that desk and seeing all the cables and grossness. That just feel, it felt too closed off. So this was really the only option. I thought about putting it over here since it's basically the same size, but over here ended up being the choice, mainly because they couldn't run the internet and modem to the other side. They had to bring it in here. So that helped me make my decision. I love this nook for my guitar cases. This is that gobo I was talking about. This is probably, uh, I think it's three inches thick, just made with two by fours. Um, I didn't make them, but this is just a basic bed sheet, I think, with fi fiberglass insulation inside. And then some casters on a couple more two by fours so I can wheel this around as needed. This is one of my favorite things ever. Build yourself a pair of these. You can use them as absorption to the left and right of your mix position, but then you can also wheel them around the room to make gobos for doing a vocal session. I could put two together and stand right here. Listen to how much more dead the sound is when we're right here. I could make a little booth out of that without much effort. There are the bass traps like I talked about. These are my lights that I use only in the last year or so I started using these. They make all the difference for doing videos. Um, obviously, since I work for Personas, 
I have a crap load of Personas gear, Studio Live, Atom controller, which I hardly ever use, IO Station 24C, which is mainly I'm just using as a fader port right now, some Personas preamps. This one is currently dead, I need to get that fixed. This one I use sometimes, that one I haven't used in a while. Patch bay that just lets me plug in here, then the cables go behind the plug into everything else. These are the Personas R65 monitors. They're six and a half inch woofer with the ribbon tweeter. Pretty cool. They're not super popular for whatever reason, but I dig them. Pictures. <laughs> um, this is a box my grandfather gave me when I was a kid. I loved buttons and switches. And he was in the army and he took this box that was, he was some sort of engineer and this had a multimeter in it and he turned it into basically a little box for me to flip switches and turn the light on because I love buttons and switches. So it is my most prized possession in the studio. And look, now I have all these buttons that I get to flip now. So, and Grandy passed away a couple years ago. So I love having that out. 27-inch uh, iMac, fairly new. Canon camera, Rebel SD drive, one terabyte. I'm amazed at how small that is. Sorry, the audio is a little bit loud. Mechanical keyboard, I forget. I think this is Keychron. Uh, their mechanical clicky one, not the clicky one, but the other one with brown switches. I really like that. I use a trackpad so I can do things like zoom in, move things around, zoom in and out in a session, scroll around the session without having to pick up a mouse all the time because that started to hurt my wrist. You'll find I have pencils everywhere. Don't use the 11 rack. Don't use this, but I just want to put it in the rack anyway. Central station for switching between speakers, which I only have a set right now. Um, I also have my keyboard plugged in. This is a brand new thing. This is an old Yamaha Motif keyboard, but if you go look at the back, it has an optical output. And I thought, surely that doesn't work. But this central station has an optical input that of course I'm not using. So I plugged it in and sure enough, that comes through nice and clean, no analog hum from cables, just a straight digital signal that I can switch to there, which is really fun. So this is mostly just a MIDI controller. Um, nice weighted hammer action, but then I can play it if I want to. HD 650 headphones, some stands, all my mic stands live back there in the corner. And I've shown you the absorption. Here is kind of productivity corner. Books, papers, files, um, pencils, journals. I keep a lot of journals. That's just some of them. The obligatory djembe, the obligatory blue couch with lots of Wayne fur, Wayne's the kitty. Uh, here's the, oh yeah, that's Wayne right there. See, I couldn't have done this without that guy right there. Um, this is just cables, mics, gear, all packed in. This is a painting my kid did a few years ago. Isn't that cool? He was like six, I think, eight. Uh, Vox amp here, Fender amp here, pedal board here. Most of my guitars are out, a few are not. And that's the studio. There she is. Thanks for watching. If you're not already a Home Studio Corner subscriber, please do so. Join the club, and we'll see you in the next one.